and welcome back to episode number three of Breaking Down Chronology. The previous episodes have focused on sequencing and then the importance of scales and today we'll be adding on that by looking at the concept of duration and intervals. It'll follow as ever a similar format where I'll be sharing a couple of timelines and explaining why using these terms is useful, helpful and gives us a better grasp of chronology. Once again, you will notice that I'm repeatedly using the same timeline to help build up the understanding of what we can do with them when we think about which concepts we're choosing to deliberately stress. So I will quickly load a timeline and then we can get started. Interval and duration. An interval is an intervening time between two points. And a duration is a time during which something continues to happen. In this case, both of them allow us to interpret the chronology more effectively, and it really helps support the idea that a timeline is an organisational tool. It allows us to depict the knowledge we're teaching with a clear purpose and an accurate representation. Like before, I'll show you an example of some timelines and you will recognise them, but I'm making some additions to them to help build up that coherence. Let's start with Key Stage 1. Here you can see the overall narrative timeline. The scale is in decades, which allows the children to count back, to identify the intervals between the years. You can see that changes within living memory is depicted as a bar, therefore it's showing a duration of time. For the Great Fire of London, sometimes I might ask the children, I wonder why nobody phoned the fire brigade? Anybody got any ideas? My logic with this is to help them build a better understanding of well, what the world was like when it happened. One thing that's probably very obvious to us as adults, but wouldn't be to children necessarily, is well, there were no telephones. The additional picture in the middle that you can see on the timeline is the invention of the telephone. And because I've got my clear scale, I can show the interval between the fire happening and the telephone being invented. Now, the other obvious answer is why nobody phoned the fire brigade is because there wasn't a fire brigade. That's an interesting consequence, indirectly, of the Great Fire. On to key stage two. Once again, you can see it's the overall narrative. When I'm introducing the concept of periodization in year three, that's the fact that the overall narrative of history is broken into these blocks of time called periods. We start the narrative with the Paleolithic, so the earliest point of human history. And if we scale our timelines, we can show the relative durations with an element of accuracy. To be honest, you cannot scale the Paleolithic accurately unless you've got about 700 metres of space. Sadly, we don't. But it allows me to show that human history developed over an enormous duration of time. And that's why we're only focusing on very small fragments of it. Then when we introduce the Romans, we can look and go, which had the longer duration? The children will be able to identify it was the Paleolithic by far. And the reason I colour code the bars of the different duration is if a child can't say Paleolithic, then what they can indicate is the colour. That shows a level of understanding. What we'll do then is we'll help them to say the word Paleolithic and we'll build that fluency over time. But the reason that having British and world history on the Key Stage 2 timeline is important is for this. This is the duration of the ancient Egyptian period, which has a longer duration. Prehistory, by far. But we can see the enormity of the Egyptian period when it's compared to things like the Roman period. The intervals don't really come across massively here. You can probably see a short interval between the Roman and Anglo-Saxon and Duke settlement, but that comes across more on the internal narrative which you can see once again here. Why is there a cluster of events just after the conquest of Britain? Well, that's because we're going to teach about the, fa the fact that some of the Britons, like Cartimandua, cooperated with the Romans and became client kingdoms, and quite a few rebelled against them, hence Boudicca. So we have that cluster of events which we're going to study. You'll notice that the duration of roads being built is a bar. That's consistency through school. Intervals tend to come across more in the internal narrative. Not always, but it does tend to be the case. 
And now just to quickly summarise. In history, things happen over a duration of time. That duration of time inevitably varies from the enormous Paleolithic overview through to the World Wars, where we teach for the full half term, but it's only a duration of, let's say, 30 to 40 years. And then, because we select certain events to be taught, the intervals need to cover that we select aspects of the period to be taught. What I mean by that is, we can't teach everything. The brilliant Ian Dawson of Thinking History describes it as, we're going to teach the story of the Romans. We've only got time to read a few pages. So let's teach the fact that that's why the interval's there. These terms will be modelled by adults before the children will use them. That's just normal teaching. Not a surprise, I'm sure. As soon as the concept of interval and duration is relevant, teachers should be using the terminology. Both of these concepts are much easier to teach and therefore understand because of clearly scaled timelines. If you don't scale your timelines, this is much harder to do. So, there we go. That's the end of this first part of this series, Breaking Down Chronology. The first part is all about singular timelines and gaining a better understanding of how to use them, how to make them, and therefore how to interpret what they represent. The next part is going to introduce the idea of concurrence, as in exploring multiple timelines running parallel to each other. Hopefully you found these initial ones useful. It'd be great if you could give the channel a subscribe and share it with any teacher friends or colleagues. I'll be back again soon with that next part. Thank you so much, and I'll see you later. Bye.